So good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all doing better than I am. Um, sitting supposedly is the new disease, and this was called the new disease before uh, we've been relegated to working online for so many hours in a day and sitting in front of a computer. And uh, how do we uh, try to reduce the aches and pains that uh, probably come with bad posture and a bad seating position is something we're gonna be looking at today. And we're lucky to have occupational therapist with us, uh, Yo-Yo Kwok, who's gonna walk or rather sit us through um, how to best maintain our health uh, and making sure that when we're online, we're not throwing uh, ourselves and our backs and our necks offline. So Yo-Yo, uh, thank you for being here with us today. And um, I'll let you uh, start this session. And uh, we look forward to hearing about how we can we maintain our uh, physical health while in front of the computer screen all these hours. Thank you for being with us. So today, as you know, I'll be talking about ergonomics. Uh, I just want you to know that it will be very difficult to tailor the principles to each and one of you because you are numbers today. Uh, but also keep in mind that we don't have a million ways to do it. We only have a few scenarios to do it. So by the end of today, I hope that I'll give you some pointers. Keep in mind, we are not aiming for perfection. I just want you to get as close as possible to the scenarios that I'll be giving you today. So before we talk about ergonomics, bring in the computers, the keyboard and whatnot, we have to talk about a proper sitting posture because that's the fundamental on how we do things because as Frank was saying, we are always sitting. We need to know how we sit. I'm quite sure that we've been saying to kids and your students, you have to be straight and whatnot, but what does it mean being straight? How do we sit properly? So let's kind of go into the different things today so that you know. So regardless of the chair, it can be an office chair, it can be just an armchair, it can be your sofa, a sitting posture applies to everywhere. So the first thing you want to do is to make sure that when you are seated, you go all the way to the back, to the backrest. You don't want to be sitting in the middle and then just kind of leaning back because you'll be slouching or you don't want to prevent you from leaning forward either. So you want to make sure that your butt top goes all the way to the back, that you're touching the backrest so that you're really supporting your back. When you're at this position, you also want to make sure that you're able to insert at least two finger space between your knees and the seat. If you realize you're all the way to the back and you're not able to have that space between your knee and the seat, the only way you can do is to move forward. So by moving forward, now I'm able to put two finger space between my knees and the seat, but that will be like, oh no, I lose my back rest. What you can do before you go buy an expensive chair, just grab a cushion and put it behind your back, okay? And I want something in terms of back cushion, it's not necessary to go all the way up to your head or your neck, but at least to the lower region of your scapula, okay? So where I am at right now. So I don't want anything too low, it's just at the lower back. And as I say, it's not necessary to go too high up either. But I want something a bit uniform and that you'll be able to sit comfortably. So again, butt up all the way to the back, two finger space between the knees and the seat. So once you have your back cushion, we also want to make sure that you have a good lumbar support. Okay, so I'm going to move forward so you can see. Okay, as you know, we all have different curves in our spine, and one is the lower back region. And it's important to support that curve. We want to fill in that space. So one thing that you can do is a tip, is to imagine you have a string attaching at the top of your head, and you pull that string up, okay? You don't need to exaggerate. You just kind of slightly pull that imaginary string up, and you should be able to find your natural curve. Some people are a bit, have a bit more of a curve, some people have a flat curve. Regardless of, we want to make sure that you have a support that goes right into this curve, as you can see right here. So now I'm going to show you if I physically maintain my curve and go all the way to the back of the cushion, the cushion doesn't actually go into my curve. I can actually slide my arm in. 
So meaning I'm not getting the support and unconsciously while I'm working, what my body is going to do is it's going to compensate by flattening out this curve. And again, I'm going to move up so that you can see. So this is my natural curve. I'm pulling my string up. If I have a nice support, that will be perfect. If I'm not supporting it, what I'll end up doing is I'm gonna be rounding my lower back. So now you see that by rounding my lower back, I'm also slouching my upper back. And this is what happens a lot when we're working at the computer. So not only will I have lower back pain, we'll have neck pain, shoulder pains, and upper back, because all this region are being pulled by the gravity. So this is the very important part of really make sure you tuck it in and support it. So now the question will be, will my chair provide me the right support? Some office chair, they advertise as we have the best lumbar support. But again, it's up to you to say, does it really fall into my lumbar region? Because we're all different. Because if we arise a bit too low, a bit too high, it doesn't do anything. Can we adjust it? If you're using a pillow to fill in any gap, then again, you will have to say, well, does my pillow actually go into my lumbar spine? If the answer is no, it does not. Again, before you buy any expensive chair and cushion, grab a towel, okay? Just roll it. And what you can do is to tuck it right into your lumbar curve right here, okay? What I like about this solution is first free, we all have a towel. Second of all, and the most important of all, it really targets this lumbar region, okay? It really goes into where you need the support without taking away the support of any other parts of your body. And to draw the example is sometimes people say, well, I'm not gonna use a towel, I'm just gonna use a cushion. You can do it, but what you have to do is you will have to move forward and you may lose support for your thigh so that your thigh may end up dropping down, pulling up on your hips. And if you put the cushion right here, it may go into your lumbar spine, but then you may end up losing the support for your upper back. Okay, so this is something that I don't want you to do. So that's why I really like the roll towel because it really just goes in to your lower back without compromising the other part. So now I have a fairly good support or posture for the upper body. So butt cut at the very end, two fingers spaced between the knees and the seat, a good lumbar support, okay? Now, shoulders. We wanna make sure the shoulders are in a relaxed position. And one thing that will help you to achieve that is to take a deep breath and then just let it out, drop. Now this is your relaxed position because sometimes you place it this here and there and all those subtle changes by the end of the day, your body will feel it. So make sure that you take a deep breath and just drop. Now you have a relaxed position, remember that. And once your shoulder is in a relaxed position, move your forearm to a 90 degree. The first time it will help if you are in front of a mirror because then you want to make sure you're at a 90 degree. So bring your arm straight Okay, shoulders in a relaxed position, move your forearm, 90 degree. So ideally, your arm should be supported by an armrest or anything. So now, as you can see my armrest here, I'm at my 90 degree. If I swing my forearm out, you see I'm not touching my armrest. So meaning my armrest is too low for me. So if I want to support myself on it, I'm end up gonna pull myself down, which will increase the pain. Okay, now actually this is a broken armrest. This side is not broken. So if I turn myself right here, I'm at a 90 degree. This is actually at a good height for me. You also want to make sure your armrest is at a good width. Okay, so as you can clearly see, my armrest is a bit too wide for me. So what I'll end up doing is I have to spread my arms to support myself. And when I'm spreading like this, you will see that I'm losing my straight back. 
So having armrest doesn't mean everything is perfect. You have to make sure that it's at a good height and at a good width for you, for your body. A lot of times people would be like, oh, my coworker, my friend bought this chair, it's perfect. I should get the same thing. No, you should not. You have to try because we're all made differently. Someone that will fit Frank may not fit me, may not fit Emily. All right. So again, lumbar support, but at the very end, two finger space between the knees and the seat, shoulders in a relaxed position, elbow at 90 degree. All right. Now moving to the lower body. The knees and the hips should be at the same height, parallel to the ground. The feet should be touching the floor or on a footrest. One thing that helps is to remember 90, 90, 90. 90 degree here, 90 degree at the hips, and 90 degree at the knees. Okay? So basically, this is a good proper sitting posture. Okay, This is what we're aiming at. And especially when you're working in front of a computer. Okay, so this is just an image of what we're aiming to do with our spine. We want to make sure that it's straight, but we won't have a lot of time to look at pictures today. Uh, before we move into, again, more of ergonomic principles, again, the chair I mentioned a bit earlier, you have to try it before you buy it. Okay, uh, basically, um, you can use any regular chair if it offer you a good height and a bad support. It doesn't have to be an ergonomic chair. And a bit later in my presentation, you will see that we're able to compensate without armrest. There's a way to compensate. So it's not necessary to go with an ergonomic chair. Uh, what we need is something that is for you. And it's also important that the chair will only be good in relationship with your workstation, meaning the rest of the desk and the keyboard and whatnot. Uh, even if you have the best chair for you, but it doesn't fit your desk, the height of your desk, it doesn't do anything. Um, so again, we talk about uh, office chair, the advantages is that because we have all those features, we can adjust, it's easier for you to adjust than just a regular chair, okay? Uh, so we talk about the high, we talk about the backrest that we can also have cheap options, free options for you to, uh, to compensate. We want to make sure that it offer you a good depth of the seat. But again, I offer you a bit of a solution that we can move forward and then compensate with another cushions. We want to make sure that you have a five wheels or five star base to ensure a stability. Again, armrests, you just have to make sure that it, they are made for your body. Uh, so one of the things that you can buy that is relatively budget friendly, I would say, is what we call Opus Back Cushion. So what is interesting about this cushion is you can get a warmer, Canadian tire, uh, it goes all the way to your scapula, it has a bit of a lumbar support with Velcro that you can adjust depending on where your lumbar curve is. If you have a flat curve, you can just take it out as well. And you also flare out on the side to prevent you from kind of leaning on either side. Okay. In terms of seat cushion, if you say your chair is too hard, you want something a bit more comfortable for your bum, you can always go with a normal chair cushion. You can get an Ikea, Walmart, or again, Opus Form offer you a, a gel seat cushion that is quite comfortable. I'm not affiliated to them, but it's just something that I always recommend my clients because it's something that is budget friendly. All right, so now we are ready to talk about ergonomic principle. I know a lot of you work with uh, laptops, but I have to talk about desktop before moving on to laptops, just because laptops are just not ergonomically well designed. So uh, keep in mind that regardless of whatever type of computer you're using, this is what we're trying to aim at, okay? So coming back to my sitting posture, nothing has changed, okay? So it's the same sitting posture, ideally 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree, okay? So once I'm at the good sitting posture, I'm ready to bring in first the keyboard. So first scenario, 90 degree at 
the elbows, supporting by the armrest. The keyboard should fall right underneath my hands. Okay, maintaining my wrist in a neutral position. I don't want your wrist to be up or down in a neutral position. This is usually in the case when you have a keyboard tray or your desk being low enough to do that if you're using a kitty desk. But usually most desks are not at this height. Okay, so most of the time it's when you have a keyboard tray. Now, if you say, I don't have a keyboard tray, my keyboard is directly on the desk, a bit high up. This is where we can compromise because life is full of compromises. So if you're looking at the image, we'll be looking at the lady at this point. So the keyboard is on the table. So the compromise is instead of having your elbows at 90 degree, we are, can stretch out a bit of your elbows. So by stretching out, you're also going a bit higher up as you can see. So 90, I'm stretching up to get to the keyboard. Okay. That is something we can do. So we're not necessarily at 90, but we're just outstretching. But one thing to keep in mind is you're just outstretching a bit. I don't want you to fully extend your arms, or I don't want you to outstretch and raise your shoulder. Your shoulders always have to be at a neutral position. Okay. So again, scenario one, the perfect scenario is 90 degree. Keyboard four right here with a keyboard tray. Or we can outstretch a bit of the arms by always keeping the shoulder in a relaxed position and the keeper is somehow on the table. Okay, so those are the two compromises, two scenarios that we can get. So once you are able to find your keeper position, then now we're ready to bring in the screen. Okay, so the screen, the distance between you and the screen is one arm length, so right here. And that usually works for anything that is 15, 17, 90 inches wide. Now we have big screens. If you have any screen bigger than 19 uh, inches, at maybe an inch at the tip of your fingers, okay? So one arm length, this is where your screen should be at. If it's too close, you push it up. If it's too far, you bring it back. So that's usually not a difficult thing to change. The height of the screen. So how do we find that? So you're just going to look right in front of you, look straight. And then you're going to draw an imaginary straight line where your eyesight is going to hit. You may want to have the help of someone because you don't want that imaginary line to draw. You really want to look straight. Draw an imaginary straight line, and that line should hit the top of your screen. So right here, she is looking straight, and she is hitting the top of the screen. And the reason why is when we're looking straight, we're using all our facial muscles to control our eyes. And when we relax those muscles, our eyesight is going to drop around 30 degrees hitting the center of the screen, meaning we'll be able to look at the screen without using too much of those muscles. So avoiding any eye fatigue, but also avoiding you bending your neck. Okay, I wanna make sure your neck is in a straight position. Okay. All right, so basically that's that. Okay, it's not that difficult. What's difficult is we have to play with the adjustment. Your sitting posture, we talk about it. Keep it right under your hands or your outstretching slightly your elbows. Screen, one arm length right there. And the height, look straight in front of you and you should be hitting the top part of the screen. Okay. Now talking about the screen, uh, if it's too low, what you can do is easy. You're just going to tuck a few books and whatnot underneath, or you can always buy a screen stand, which will cost you a couple of uh, maybe $50 or something, but use books. Okay. Uh, if you say your screen is just too high and you cannot adjust it lower, then you will have no choice to move yourself up. Now, if you move yourself up, you may find yourself in a situation that your feet are no longer touching the ground, then you need to bring in a foot rest. 
you want to make sure that your feet are always supported and your knees are always at the same height of your hips, okay? So I don't want you to just raise yourself up in the chair and then have your feet dangling and also pulling your knees down, okay? I want you to use a foot rest to bring it up to the same level. Also, I don't want the foot rest to be too high. You bring your knee too high up because then all the pressure is going to drop on your hip and lower back region. So knees always at the same height as the hips. And if you move yourself up, you will have no choice to move your keyboard up. So when we're talking about ergonomics, I always say that you and the keyboard is one part. The screen is another part. So if you move yourself up, you have to bring the keyboard up. You have to put a footrest in. Uh, if you move yourself down, you have to move the keyboard down. Uh, so it's always that kind of relationship we're talking about, you, the keyboard, versus the screen. I hope so far it's so good. Um, now we're just going to talk about laptops. So we talk about desktop. Now we are in the laptop. As you can see, we have two scenarios, one with a keyboard tray, one having the keyboard on the table directly. The only difference of the laptop and the desktop is we will encourage you to use the laptop as the screen. So you wanna kind of separate it uh, using an external keyboard and a mouse. The reason why is laptop, as I say, are just not ergonomically designed. So they are like this, okay? So if I'm working, even though I have a 90 degree and whatnot, the screen is really too low. So what you end up doing is bending your leg and slouching, which is something we don't want. You can say, well, I'm just gonna move it up. But if you do type, you're not gonna type like this, okay? So it's just a weird option. Laptop are really made for something we grab and go. We need to do something quick. But if you are in front of the computer for the whole day, I really encourage you to use your laptop as just a screen, bringing an external keyboard, bringing an external mouse, so that whatever we just talk about as a desktop will apply for you. This is just a nice video of how to correct and whatnot. You can watch it a bit later on because we don't have time to watch videos today. All right. So I want to spend a bit of time criticizing Emily Workstation. All right. The reason why is um, I have a lot of confidence in you guys, teachers, because you do have this critical uh, judgment. Uh, you guys are creative. You'll be able to do that on your own. If you know how I do an analysis and now you have the content on how to do with the posture, I'm quite sure that you'll be able to analyze your own posture and improve it. Okay. Now to do that, you need to take a picture on a side view. And if you Google ergonomic principle on Google, this is always the picture you will find. Okay. On the side, you'll be able to look at your alignments where you are at. In the front, we only see your pretty faces and doesn't help us more. So we need to take a picture. I hear that sometimes it may be difficult because of narrow space and whatnot. Uh, try as much or try to maintain that posture, just roll your chair out to somewhere is a bit bigger space for you to do that, okay? So now let's show you a bit of my analysis of Emily's workstation, okay? So first, uh, again, keep in mind, I only have a 2D picture of Emily. The angle of how it's taken may not represent 100% of her reality, and I've never seen her, so... This is a bit of assumptions, but this is what I can see from the picture. So the first thing from Emily is her arms. So what I noticed at, again, she's using a laptop, that's the first thing. So meaning she doesn't have a keyboard tray. So she's in the scenario that she's outstretching her elbows, but I believe she's outstretching a bit too much of her elbows and also bringing her shoulders up, okay? 
So this is what I think she is. Instead of just out stretching a bit, she's out stretching a bit too much and bringing her shoulders up. So that's the first uh, problem. Right here, we can see that she's not supporting her upper back and the thoracic region. I think that is a downfall of her chair because it's flare out. And I actually have the same thing with my chair right here. It flare out. So if she goes all the way to the back, she'll be inclining, okay, in a lazy butt position, which is not appropriate. Um, I didn't comment much on the lower back because on the picture it's always difficult to see, but I feel like she may be slightly rounding a bit of her lower back. You can see she's slightly rounding a bit here, but I'm not sure but because again, it's a picture. Now we also see that her chair kind of have a lumbar support thing, but that actually is pushing at the top part of her bum and not necessarily the lower region right here. Okay. And then uh, we can see that her hips are actually higher than her knees. Okay, And that I have the feeling is because she wants to touch the ground with her feet, she's pulling her knees down a bit. And then at last, laptop, she's using laptop. And as we've been talking about, is a bit too low for her. So my option, assumptions for Emily, I am not sure if it's right, Emily, you let me know. I can assume she has neck and shoulder pain. She may have a bit of pressure at the elbows, a bit of discomfort at the hip and the thigh region because her knees are pulling down and maybe somehow not knowing where to place her feet. That is am pretty I accurate. <laughs> I have <laughs> definitely have elbow pain. But I hate to admit to you that I normally sit cross-legged on my chair. Okay. And I have oh, now adjusted point. it. <laughs> okay. So that's a good point because I have not talked about cross leg. <laughs> okay. Sometimes we do that if we are not touching the ground. If you're doing that for just maybe 10 minutes, I'm okay. Again, I'm not aiming for perfection. Okay. But if you sit like this for two hours, your hips will hate you. Okay, uh, another thing, we always cross our legs too, okay? If it's just for 10 minutes, it's fine. Hours, no. And the reason why is we want to maintain our hip alignment. Whenever I'm crossing my leg over, you see I'm pulling my hip on one side and my lower body is slightly twisting. Those are things we don't know, but our body is compensating. So by the end of the day, you'll be like, ah, Another thing is, sorry, the information I missed earlier. Uh, sometimes my clients will say, but I'm comfortable. So one thing you have to remember, what is comfortable may not be appropriate. What is appropriate may not be comfortable at the beginning. Okay, I'm going to show you. I am very comfortable. Okay, I can <laughs> sit like this. Talk to you like this, professionally speaking, it's not appropriate at all. But alignment-wise, it's not. But I'm comfortable. So what it will end up be is by the end of the day, whenever I try to get up, this is where I'll be like, ouch. Then my clients will be, I don't know why, it's so comfortable. But because it's not appropriate. So that will be something that you have to keep in mind. Your level of comfort may sometimes trick you. All right, so let's correct Emily posture. So the first thing will be the arms, as we talk about. I want her to go to the 90 degree. And she actually have two options to achieve that. So either she raise her chair up or she install a keyboard tray, okay? As you can see, I offer you a bit of the uh, prices. Raising herself up is totally free. Installing a keyboard tray, she can shop around, but we're talking about $50 and up plus a handyman, okay, unless she is able to chew things on her own, but it takes a bit of time. And each of those options going to lead to something a bit different. So let's say she choose option A. Okay. So Emily decides she's going to go with the free option. So now she's like this. She's going to raise herself up. Okay. So by raising, herself, she's able to get to the 90 degree. But by raising herself up, 
for sure her feet will not be touching the ground. So meaning she will need to use a foot rest. So a foot rest so that her feet are supported and at a good height to bring her knees right back at the level of her hips. Okay. So let's say if she stay as it is right now in the picture, I still think she will need a foot rest, okay? Because her knees are already too low. So imagine her bringing herself up, her knees will be really dangling down. So option A, raising her chair up to get to that 90 degree will also require the use of a foot rest. So let's say she say, I want to use a keyboard tray. I'm gonna install something. Perfect. So by installing a keyboard tray, so the keyboard tray is gonna arrive somewhere here. So meaning if she goes with option B, instead of getting high up, she may find herself having to lower herself down. But if she lower herself down, she may have the chances to lower her hip at the same level of her hips, meaning she may not need the foot rest. So this is a kind of an interesting case Emily has offered us because we see that we begin with two options and each of the options kind of lead to different things. So this is why when we're talking ergonomics, it's hard to say this is what you need to do because when it comes into the adjustment, one thing kind of leads to another. But right now, if we're just talking about our sitting posture, this is what we need to do. And then in terms of the chair we talk about, uh, either she can use a cushion, she can buy a cushion, or she can buy a new chair. It all depends on how much you want to spend on it. And then at last, uh, the screen. We talk about laptop, we have to use it as a screen. So either way, uh, first, she can try to put her laptop up, okay? Emily mentioned about the big screen. So just in the picture, I'm not sure if she's using, but this will be something that Emily can question. Can I use just the big screen? Because it's bigger, it will be easier. Fis visually, it will give her much more so that she's not kind of just slouching and look at this tiny little screen. Um, so can we use the big screen? If she used the big screen, she will have to lower it down. Because you see that right now from the picture, she's hitting almost the middle. I want her eyesight hit the top part right here. Okay. And obviously, she will need to use an external keyboard and a mouse. So all in all, this is the workstation for Emily. Again, budget-wise, she has lots of free options. But if she buy everything, I suggest her to buy will be around 170 plus tax and an expensive chair. So moving on to Frank. Um, so just looking at the picture, we can see that again, he's using a laptop, but his arms are actually not too bad. He's in an outstretched position, but the shoulder seems to be in a relaxed position. So I'm okay with that. Um, same thing as Emily, the upper back is not being supported, not as bad as Emily, a bit, just a little gap, but it's still not supported. Then we can see that the hips and the knees are not at the same level. Again, we can see that the screen is way too low. So impression for friend, neck and upper back pain. Uh, discomfort at the hips, lower back region. I think that's pretty much, but it's not too bad. So how to correct the posture? The arms, I think Frank can keep his arm like this. I'm happy with that. I don't have a problem unless he's not, but for me, it's fine. Again, use a cushion to fill that gap. Uh, use a foot rest to bring the fit up so that we can get the 90 degree right here. And as you know, probably is to bring the laptop up 
to meet his eyesight. So, but I see a bit of a rounding. So if the laptop is on the table, this is what we end up doing because we want to see. So by using a suppressed edge, we're going to straighten everything up. So again, lots of free options, but if friends buy everything, we're talking about 120 plus packs, all right? You don't have to buy every single thing, okay? And I will offer you some homemade solutions. And before you invest hundreds of dollars uh, on equipment, try with the homemade solutions and see if it works out. If you say, you know what, this is what I like, then you invest. As I said earlier, what is appropriate may be uncomfortable at first because you've been like this and suddenly straighten yourself up. Some muscles are going to complain. They may not like you. So it takes time to get used to it. Now I see we're running out of time. Uh, I have three participants showing me pictures without them being in the pictures. I provide you some pointers, but unfortunately I don't have the time to go through each of the pictures. Uh, I'm going to provide my email to Emily. She can send it out to you. If you have any question, you can let me know. So coming back to the question about two screens. Um, as I say, I want you to choose one main screen as possible and have the main screen in front of you. The other screen will be more like an assistant. Maybe you're looking at more on an occasional basis. Um, I want the screens, all screens to be at the same height. Okay, I don't want them to be at different heights so that you're always kind of moving your neck around. I want you to be just kind of able to glance to the right and the left without moving too much of your neck. Same thing with documents. If you find I have papers I have to look at, use the document holders. And right here is a homemade uh, solution. Use a clip. Use cardboard to make you something if you don't want to spend on the document holders. So way to set that, we talk about uh, laptops. You can use binder, you can use book. One thing about laptop, you just want to make sure the ventilation is not blocked because you don't want it to explode or burn. Uh, foot rest, you can always buy an adjustable foot rest. You can use a plastic stool. You can use book. What I like to do is the tangerine box. Don't throw them out. Flip them on the other side. If it's not high enough, put a book on top. By the end of the day, the homemade solution will be more aesthetic. You'll be like, ah, it's ugly to look at. Who cares? If it works, it's fine. And another thing is one foot rest, especially if um, you realize, oh, I need a foot rest, you may find yourself that maybe you only need two inches. But when you buy a plastic stool, non-adjustable, it's this. So then you may end up bringing your knees too high up and it's not useful. So if you're using books and whatnot, measure the height. Oh, this is how much I need. Go on Amazon, look at the dimensions, make sure it falls right into your dimension. Um, we talk about keyboard tray. I just want to offer you another tip of, let's say all things fail. You're not able to get a keyboard tray. You're not able to outstrap your arms. What you can do is to take your keyboard, bring a cushion, put it right on your lap, okay? You can use a cushion, you can use a lap tray or desk. That will be able to have your 90 degree. One thing is a bit less convenient with this strategy is you cannot really move and stretch. Whenever you get out, you have to like get everything out. But if all fails, this can be a solution for you. Nowadays, sit to stand desk is very popular. It's an expensive option. For me, it's a luxury. Is it necessary? No. If you do get up and stretch, I will be fine. Okay, Unless you have a medical condition that I'm not known of. But the golden rule is every two hours, I want you to get up and stretch. And doesn't mean you have to run a marathon. It will be just like this. Get up, stretch, and then I come back. Okay, It takes a few seconds. If you're able to do that, it's fine. But if you want... You can go, and uh, but I don't have the time to go too much into details of a sit-to-stand desk. 
keyboard. Again, you want to ask your questions if you want a bigger keyboard or you want a keyboard without the numeric pack so that it will be a bit more compact for you depending on the size of your hands. The mouse will be the same thing, the different mouse. Uh, again, do you want to ask your question? Do you want to use a smaller one, a bigger one? Do you want to have your wrist in a more of a neutral position? This is what we call the vertical mouse because sometimes for people flipping their hand can be painful for their wrist. So quickly tips, as I say, get up every two hours. Remember, even if you have the best posture, it doesn't mean you won't have any tension. Tension are still being built in your joints and your muscles as time goes. So you really have to get up. Uh, you have a presentation on screen fatigue, apply those strategies. Be aware of screen glare. So ideally, your window should be on your side, not in front of you, not in the back. Your desk lamp should be in the opposite side of your dominant hand so you're not casting a shadow. Another tip is to use a movable webcam so that you can move the webcam instead of like me, moving myself around, okay? Uh, your workspace, declutter your workspace as much as possible. Make sure the things that you use the most frequently is in front of you in elbow length. And then as the third that is go, it always depending on the usage the frequency i don't have time i include some uh, stretching exercises in my powerpoint i also have video of i don't know if you know yoga with adrian i love her uh, videos i cannot prescribe exercises for you but check it out she has a video on yoga at your desk she also have one stretching video with the neck and shoulder upper back region which usually we have most tension being built so that's it. I think, sorry, I may have took a bit too much time, but I hope I'm able to give you some tips on how to improve your posture. Thank you so much for that, Yo-Yo. I've already made like a few changes myself. Um, I'm seeing in the chat, Natan, you're asking, will Yo-Yo's PowerPoint be shared? Yes, of course. She's also um, got a couple of like one pagers for different desk workspace situations that we're going to share with you as well. Um, I put a reflection question in the chat. We um, won't be able to have time for breakout rooms today, but now that you've heard all of these amazing tips from Yo-Yo, how are you going to put this new knowledge into practice for yourself? Um, how are you going to share it with your colleagues and also with your students? So we'd love to hear from you in the chat what changes you think uh, you might like to make. Just a couple more minutes. I did collect some of those questions from the chat. Um, Nutan, you mentioned you're using a ball chair and it's like helpful for your sciatica, but it's a little bit rough on your lower back. I don't know, Yo-Yo, if you have sciatica, any thoughts on that. Because sciatica is in self a medical condition, I won't be able to provide too much recommendation without a whole evaluation. It's just not... A good way of doing so. But I also in the chat room say that uh, you are saying that at 90 degree it increase a bit of your sciatica. So what you can do is instead of a 90 degree, sit more in the front, lest your hip, uh, your knees drop a bit below. But again, I'm not sure if it's really a way to, because I don't know the severity of your sciatica, how long has it been, where it's exactly blocking your sciatica, where the compression is. So I think for you, the best way is to, if you want, is to go back with really a professional and have a thorough evaluation. But for sure, if you're just sitting at the ball, you're missing this. Sometimes you will have those kind of a ball chair with a backrest, but again, because the curve, you don't necessarily have the backrest, so it's a bit complicated. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Indeed. And Gail had asked a question yeah. about cell phones. Like we're always looking down when we're answering um, our cell yes. phones at work, so we're doing a lot of this yes. kind of movement. There will be cell phone stand. Again, if you go on Amazon, you'll be able to kind of have your cell phone kind of, uh, depending on the usage, if your testing is difficult. But if Isaac you is want, showing us his cell phone stand right there. Thank yes, you, Isaac. But there are cell phone stand that you can kind of clip on next to your laptop and then put it right next to there so that it gives you a better visual as well. Awesome. I think you had one of those in the item list. Something I think like that. So. 
<laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll share that with you, Gail. And uh, Dominique asked, um, she gets very tired standing at her homemade standing desk. So I guess she stretches. Like uh, the there down. are two tricks. The uh, standing, uh, you can buy what we call antique, anti-fatigue mat uh, that they can have it. I don't know if my list have me, maybe I can send it to Emily after. So it's just a cushiony padding uh, mat. You can buy in Costco. Usually people use it at the kitchen in front of their sink. So it's a bit more cushiony. What you mm. can do is also to put one foot up. And that will help you to kind of alternate your position. So you can put one foot up for uh, 15 minutes and then you alternate. Okay. That's great. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Yo-Yo. This is really, really informative. And uh, I'm already trying to make all these uh, small adjustments uh, for the rest of the participants here. As teachers, you know, you're planning your lessons online and then you're giving your lessons online at uh, the amount of time in front of the screen and trying to uh, accommodate your students uh, is, is quite the task. This is fairly new to all of us. And I can imagine all the uh, aches and pains that people are starting to feel. And hopefully um, what we learned today will alleviate some of those aches and pains. Um, also, you'll notice that there's a just thinking about this cross-curricular uh, kind of component here, there's enough math in here with degrees and the angles. So any teachers that are here, uh, you can easily kind of migrate this into a lesson for your students and see if you can include a math and, of course, a language component when we're uh, trying to present this, uh, this PowerPoint and this uh, ergonomic solutions for our students as well as for ourselves. So um, thank you all for your participation today. Thank you again, Yo-Yo, for walking us or sitting us through this. It was really, really informative. Uh, please keep uh, your ears and eyes open for the next Apre Cool, which will take place at some point in the month of May. Your, uh, your respective consultants will get in touch with you for the date and time for our next Apre Cool. So uh, until then, thank you very much. For the EMSB teachers who attended here today, please do email uh, your presence that you were here attending today, uh, along with the center you're working at. So everyone, I hope you have a very upright and not tight day and keep safe and keep well, all right? Thank you so much for your participation. Thanks again. And Maria. all the resources and the recordings of this session, I stuck the link in the chat here. They will be accessible on the Applicable website under the Anglophone Community tile. Thank you so much for coming, everybody.